Welcome back to Japanese History for Everyone, where we are taking another deep dive into one of Japan's female leaders. Today we're talking about the second official Empress of Japan, and it's somebody that we've met before. Her name is Empress Kogyoku, but she's also known as Empress Saime in her second reign. Empress Kogyoku was born in 594 as a great granddaughter of Emperor Bidatsu. She was the wife of Emperor Jome, which if you remember is the successor of Empress Siko. And similar to the circumstances of Empress Siko's ascension, Empress Kogyoku was chosen to ascend a throne after her husband's death in order to prevent conflict due to a power struggle. Empress Kogyoku is wife of former Emperor Jome. So apparently I told this story already. So you can go here to watch the video on the Ishii incident, but for now, let's fast forward. After the abdication of Empress Kokyoku, she wanted her son, the murderous Nakano Oe, to succeed her, but he refused. So instead, she chose her brother, who ascended the throne as Emperor Kotoku. Kotoku ruled for nine years, and he was actually a pretty good ruler. He's the guy who moved the capital to Nara and oversaw the Taiko reforms, including the creation of the Rizuyo system and the Taiho code. But then he died. And who was his successor? Nakano Oe. And Nakano Oe still did not want to become the emperor of Japan. So instead, he got his mom to reascend the throne, this time as Empress Saime. So now she's back for round two. And what does she do? leaves the capital and helps lead a military expedition into Korea. I bet you weren't expecting that. Also, sounds a lot like Jingu, doesn't it? Pretty much, Empress Saime goes to Kyushu and situates herself in what is now known as Fukuoka Prefecture. And she prepares the Japanese military to assist the Korean nation of Pakja in their war against Shilla. Unfortunately, she dies in 661 before her army could depart to Korea and her body was brought from Kyushu back to the capital by sea so that they could hold a proper funeral. So Empress Kokyoku slash Saime is pretty cool because her life is filled with all sorts of twists and turns. During her first reign, she becomes close to the Soga clan only for her son to overthrow them behind her back. After a period away from the center stage of Japan's politics, she watches her country grow and change under her brother and then returns to the throne herself, this time focused on assisting Japan through a military campaign overseas. It's the story of a woman who, despite her conflicts with her own son, had quite a bit of her own agency. And if you're wondering who her successor was the second time around, it was her son, Nakano Oe, who apparently could no longer escape becoming the emperor and finally ascended as Emperor Tenji. Also, if you were wondering, Japan did send their forces back to Korea under Emperor Tenji and assisted Pakja, but they were defeated by Shila, who had by this time allied with Tang China and became so powerful that you could not quite beat them. So say what you want, but even though her reign was marred by controversy, I think she was a pretty strong female leader. So stay tuned, we'll be talking about more of Japan's female leaders in upcoming videos over the next few weeks. Please like and subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified for more videos. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thank you and see you later.